So, um, yes, yeah, thank you for the introduction. My name is Johannes Fiemann. Um, I'm actually giving this presentation for my colleague Lando Peterson, who is today unfortunately not able to be here, um, but I hope I can also deliver the content. Um, this presentation is uh, from a research company Fra from, from Fraunhofer Focus. We are an institute for, um, well, IT uh, currently very much involved in AI and machine learning, and a spin-off company called Paratrust AI, um, which is funded from some members of Fraunhofer um, currently. So um, our idea is to make uh, unmanned aerial vehicles uh, somehow autonomous so that they can fly without a pilot um, directing them, without a pilot monitoring, without a pilot planning the flight, and that they can accomplish missions by using some AI components and machine learning. And um, for us, this is in multiple domains interesting. We're not just limited to the um, aerial industry, where, where the uh, aerospace industry, but uh, we also do this for vehicles or for autonomous trains. Um, so it's basically about m making uh, agents somehow uh, adaptable in complex environments so that they can find their ways um, and that they can uh, act as they are intended to. So um, what we do have, of course, is conventional input sensors um, that give us an image about, of the environment, like uh, cameras and the human visible, uh, for the human eye visible range, for example, or in other uh, frequency spectra, so that we have some image data that we can use um, in order to confirm the position, in order to, to collect information about the environment and to accomplish the mission. But there are also more advanced sensors uh, that give probably some 3D uh, information already, like stereo cameras or LiDAR sensors. And of course, all this data um, can be used uh, to, to make an uh, autonomous agent somehow uh, adaptable to new environments. Um, so how do we create intelligent devices that somehow know uh, what they are facing and that they can uh, adopt to the situations that they are put in? So artificial intelligence is currently, of course, very much hyped, and most of it is currently done with machine learning technologies. So that is, you do have a certain problem, and you do not only have data that shows the problem, but you do have also data that has the solution that you are expecting, and now you want to create a model for that that can somehow guess the true solution from the um, source images, and um, you train basically a mathematical model, make it more accurate to solve the problem. So it's an approximation, it's not a perfect solution, but it's something that is hopefully good enough to be able to act in that environment. Of course, this approach um, should then be somehow transferred so that it can act into environments where it was not specifically trained for. And yeah, that's somehow the, the big challenge that we have a very incomplete training data set and finally we are somehow trying to make it uh, work in the complex real world where a whole lot of new things can pop up that it was not really trained for. So fortunately, there are a lot of labeled data sets already existing that can be used for training and also for testing your data. And that's a good starting point because uh, not just the big task to create images, but also to have already the solutions interpretation that you are expecting your systems to give. So that's typically a lot of manual work, and it's quite expensive to generate it. Um, but the problem is, of course, that all these data sets are quite limited and easily um, you will miss some important cases 
for which you simply don't have training data available. It's very expensive to generate it and for rare occurrences that probably are very seldom conditions that occur only once in a year. So you really have problems to generate accurate test data, training data. And um, yeah, this is still an issue really for, for especially corner cases that are uh, unlikely somehow to ever happen. Uh, so it's, it would be very expensive to, to cut down a tree to have just an image of a tree uh, blockading, for example, a railway track. So what can we do? Of course, we can try to come up with some synthetic data for training and for testing. Um, but then we run immediately into the issues. Uh, is this data really accurate for the real world problems that you might face? Or will your training be somehow biased towards the simulation, the uh, generator environments that you are using? and therefore lead to imperfect results or undesirable results as soon as it faces the real-world phenomenons. And especially if you have to deal with regulatory bodies who somehow have to manage the risks of your autonomous devices that somehow act in the environment, it can be quite challenging to convince them that uh, your training was well enough and good enough. So that's actually the challenge to somehow uh, make this gap between the real-world data and the uh, synthetic data somehow manageable, accessible um, for authorities. Um, so this is by far most extensively done at the moment for um, autonomous vehicles, where large companies try to use their massive power to, to somehow get to solutions that are well enough so that they can be finally certified to be allowed in the general traffic, even without a driver or pilot monitoring. And uh, of course, one can try to, to use these results that they produce also for other domains like railway or um, uh, unmanned uh, aerial vehicles, for example. Um, so. What is the general idea for, for uh, making simulations accurate? Well, first of all, um, how does simulation work that we kind of do? So we start basically with some real-world data and use AI to create variations from that real-world data, then create a 3D simulation, and finally do another um, AI-based uh, generative transformation so that the results are actually accurate for real-world data. And yeah, so this one, yeah. Um, so what is a typical scenario that we would like to train a drone, for example, for is um, a search and rescue operation. You want to find people somewhere in terrain. They are somewhere um, probably lost in a forest. And you let your drones fly around autonomously, and they should be able not only to navigate safely through the wood, but also uh, able to identify human beings and to detect them and eventually uh, initiate some, some other actions that might be required. Um, so basically, you start with a simple scenario, having a human being, for example, in such an environment, and then you can generate from your simulation already the ground truth that you need. You know what the person is actually, and you can simulate how it looks for different kinds of sensors or cameras um, in order to get your data for training or later eventually also for testing. And then you systematically try to make variations about it. So this would be the trivial case where the human being is somehow standing free and nothing is covered and it's clear visibility and that's that's a great case but in reality things are often much more complicated so you do have different environmental conditions and human beings can be partially hidden or they can be very different unexpected backgrounds and you do need all these different things in your training data set in order to prepare it for um, for um, 
for these different things that you can expect, actually. So you can do definitely a training that works for these simulated scenarios, but then the big question is, how does this transfer to real-world environments? And the idea is, of course, to use some real-world images with the labels as a testing data set for a system that is only trained from the, simulating, from the simulated synthetic data so that we get somehow uh, reference how good is actually our simulation for real world um, for real world use and then of course it's also tempting to use the simulated synthetic image data to test your system that is create even more corner cases for which you eventually have not trained your model and see how well it performs with these new challenges um, at the current level. Of course, here we do not have the reality check. Here it's only about um, how general the system is applicable, but nevertheless, it is also an interesting application because it's much easier and cheaper to let the um, simulation environment generate these variants, and uh, it does not require a lot of um, manual effort. Then. And so based on these um, ideas that we had, we had some research projects. And currently, we create a spin-off company that tries to make these things also applicable, practically applicable for the market so that um, we can develop with partners um, solutions for autonomous uh, vehicles uh, that, that are finally capable to accomplish complex missions. And uh, yeah. Unfortunately, Mr. Peterson, who will be the founder of Paratrust AI, um, is today not able to present us by himself. But uh, I hope that my presentation gave you a little insight. And if you do have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask them.